All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the 5M Master Series. Feels great to be back in the saddle, back doing Master Series again. For those of you who aren't familiar with this series, this is our more advanced line of 5M tutorials where we talk about uh, underused or underappreciated or even unknown features in 5M to help you level up your development skills and hopefully put some of these things to practice in your own servers. And like I alluded to in the Zero to Hero episode earlier this week, today we're going to be talking a little bit about data storage and about KVP specifically. So you might actually not know this, but 5M does have a built-in database. I know, shocker, right? Most people don't realize this, and it's not exactly the most powerful, so I can understand why some people might not be familiar with it, because even if you're using KVPs, I'm gonna venture to take a guess that uh, for ease of developer experience, you're probably still going to want to use a more traditional database like uh, MySQL, a relational database or a document-driven database like Mongo, but there is a time and a place for KVPs, and I use them uh, in my own servers. I have a, a healthy mix of relational databases, document databases, and key value stores. Uh, so what we should probably talk about first, in case you're not familiar with it, is what the heck is a KVP? And a KVP is a key value pair. So you have a key and then you have an associated value and those make a pair. So if you've ever heard of or used Redis, that's a great example of a key value pair store. So we don't get fancy queries, we don't get you know transactions or anything uh, that you might be used to. There's no tables, there's no columns and rows. Very, very simple data structure. No special queries happening, but they do serve a, a good place and a purpose in, in every 5M server's development, I think. So let's dive in and start talking about the natives that we're going to be using today. And we've got a couple different sections here because there's a couple different sets of natives that we're going to want to go over. And probably a good place to start is, well, how do we save something, right? So the native that we use for that is called set resource KVP. And uh, it is pretty simple. It takes a key and a value. It doesn't get more simple than that. So your key would basically be the name and then the value would be the value. So if we've set this, how do we get it back out? You know, how do we retrieve our KVP? And what we use there is get resource KVP string. And even more simple, all we do is give it a key and it gives us back the value that is stored there or nil if one isn't. Now a good gotcha here, and that segues well into what we have to talk about next, is you notice that this is get resource KVP string, whereas the setter was set resource KVP. First off, don't ask me why the setter doesn't have the word string on the end, I don't know. But what's important to note here is that uh, 5M's KVPs actually differentiate between strings, floats, and integers. So for the setter, when we use set resource KVP, that's a string that we're setting. And then we need to retrieve that with get resource KVP string. Now, if we had an integer we needed to save, we would call set resource KVP integer. Not really a big difference there. You're obviously just gonna give it an integer value instead of a string value. And then for floats, we have set resource KVP float. Once again, not a big surprise there. You give it a float value instead of a integer or a string value. And then we have matching getters. So we have get resource KVP int for integers and get resource KVP float for floats. So now that we know our basic setters and getters, uh, let's implement them. So I've got a pretty bog standard resource set up here with just a, it's an empty resource with a manifest uh, that has a server and a client file. We're mostly going to be working on the server today. Uh, so I'm gonna start in my server.lua and I'm gonna register two commands, one to set up some KVPs and then another to retrieve those KVPs for demonstration purposes. So my first command, register command, and we'll just call this uh, set KVPs. And then my second one we'll call get KVPs. And then in here, let's do set resource KVP. And remember, this is gonna set our string KVPs uh, to demo, and we'll just call it demo string, and then our string will be hello world, right? And then if we call set resource KVP int, and we'll just name this demo int, uh, this can be an integer, so I'll use one, two, three. And then we can call set resource KVP float, which is, uh, we'll call it demo float, and give it a float of one, two, dot, three, four. And then like we discussed, to get them, we just call get resource KVP string and give it the name of demo string. And then of course, I'm going to wrap this in a print so we can actually see what we're getting. Likewise, we have get resource KVP int and we'll pull out our integer and get resource KVP float and we will pull out our float. 
So if I just start this resource, and the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call get kvps to start. And you'll notice we have nil, zero, and zero decimal zero, because those are our default values when a kvp doesn't exist. Now if I call set kvps and then get kvps again, you'll see we have hello world one, two, three, and one, two dot decimal three, four. So it doesn't really get much simpler than that, does it? You just set it and get it, and it's pretty straightforward. That's one thing that's nice about these KVP stores. There's not queries or any of that stuff that you have to deal with. It's just set a value, get a value, and that's saved. What if we want to unsave though? What if we want to delete a value? So we do have a native for that, which you might be able to guess is just delete resource KVP. So now let's add a new command and we'll call this del KVPs for delete KVPs. And then we will just call delete resource KVP and demo string. And then we will do this for our integer and our float. And of course on this delete one, the, uh, the type integer float string doesn't matter. It's just going to be delete resource KVP for any of them. And now I will restart my resource, get my KVPs, they're still there, delete my KVPs and get them again, and they're gone, they're back to those default values of nil, zero, and zero decimal zero. So one thing you might be asking is, this seems really limited, and you know, how can I store more complex data structures? And there's kind of the obvious that comes to mind, which is just make a table, JSON encode it into a string, slap it into KVP. That's fine, honestly, I've done that, I do that. Um, I wouldn't get too big with those, those you know, JSON documents, but if you need to, that's a good way to just store some rich data in KVP and then, you know, obviously JSON decode it when it comes back out. But there's a couple more natives available to us that can help here. And these are the find KVP natives. And basically how those work is uh, we can use the start find KVP native and give it uh, the prefix, right? So in the example we just did, we used a prefix of demo and a colon and then something. And we could actually use this technique and use start find KVP to basically find all of those keys that start with any given value. We can use the find KVP native. Now this is, it's a little unusual how this works. Um, but what you do is you call start find KVP and you just assign that to a, a variable. And then you call find KVP with that variable and that returns the first key that it finds. And then each time you call find KVP after that, it keeps returning keys until it runs out and then it returns a nil. So we can actually iterate through all of the keys that have a specific prefix uh, by just using a repeat with find KVP. And then uh, when you're using the start find KVP system, uh, you need to clean up after yourself and call end find KVP and pass in that KVP handle when you're done. So let's dive into the code and see how this looks in practice. So I'm gonna register a command called set KVPs. That's the same command we've been using. I'm just gonna change it up a bit. And then I'm gonna create a command called find KVPs. So in my set KVPs, I'm just gonna set some up here and we're just gonna call set resource KVP. And I'm gonna use a prefix of find underscore demo and then one, and then we'll call this one two and three. So we basically just have three keys, find demo colon one, two, and three, uh, that, you know, they all start with this find underscore demo colon, so we'll be able to use the find KVP natives on them. So how do we do that? Uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is get that handle. So I'll just call it KVP handle and we will call start find KVP and then pass in the prefix that we're looking for, which in our case is find underscore demo colon. Uh, and then we also just need a, a variable called key initialized. We'll just set it to nil. And now what we want to do is repeat. And inside of our repeat, uh, we will set key equal to find KVP and KVP handle. So remember this will return the first key that it finds that matches our prefix. And then each time we call find KVP after this, it'll return the next one in sequence. So we will repeat that until not key. So we'll keep doing that over and over and over until it returns no. And then of course we probably wanna see what's going on here. So we will say if key, then print, and we'll print out the key, and then get resource KVP string of that key. So we'll see the key and then the value, of course. Don't forget to throw an end on that. And then like I said, when you're done, you need to clean up after yourself with end find KVP and give it that KVP handle. All right, and now if we restart our resource and I'll start with calling find KVPs and we see that nothing comes back. If we call set KVPs and then find KVPs, you can see all three of them come back. Now, ordering is not guaranteed here. That's okay, you probably have some other logic to deal with that. 
but you can see that we did get one, two, and three. So we got all three of our KVPs by kind of iterating over these keys like this. And now that we know how this works, we should talk about some important gotchas. And before, before you click away, I, I see the viewership charts and I know that once the tutorial finishes, everyone clicks away from the video. This time, please stick around for just a little bit because there are a couple gotchas that you should know about when using KVPs. And the first gotcha we need to cover is that these are separate on client and server. So when you set a KVP on the server, it is not available on the client. And likewise, if you set a KVP on a client, because these natives are available client side, they are not available on the server. In fact, each client has its own separate KVP store. So this works really well for say, storing user preferences, because each client's going to have their own unique specific KVP that's accessible to them. And then of course the server has its own KVP store. The other gotcha that you should know about is you notice these natives have set resource, get resource KVP. The resource in there is actually really important because not only are KVPs scoped between client and server, but they're actually scoped between resources. So one resource will not have access to KVPs that another resource set. So that's a really important consideration when you're building these out is that each resource, you can think of it as each resource having its own database and any other resource cannot access that resource's database. Now there is uh, a difference to that on the client. There are some natives client side that allow you to reach into another resources KVP store and grab something out of it. I'll leave that as an exercise to you as a 5M master to go check out those natives and understand how they work, decide if they're relevant to your use case, but just note that that isn't available on the server. And I know the first time you hear about KVPs and you're in this relational database mindset, it's, it's easy to stop and think, well, what's the, what, why, what would I even use this for? Um, and you know, there's lots of use cases. So one thing that I pointed out, like user preferences, right? Maybe you have some type of settings where users can set, uh, you know, if their HUD is visible or something like that. Um, instead of storing all that stuff, you know, passing it from client to server and storing it in a database and retrieving it and sending it back and maintaining all of that, you can kind of pass all of those responsibilities off to the client and just keep them in a client side KVP. As long as that player doesn't uninstall 5M or something, then those will stick around forever. So a real life use case where I've used KVPs in the past is I had a role play server and we had, uh, you know, the Diamond Casino and we had the penthouse at the Diamond Casino and you could win a ticket that gave you like three nights in the casino penthouse. That was the only way to stay there was to kind of win this ticket and then you would redeem that for three nights. And so I used KVPs to store the, uh, the ID or the, the identifier of the player who was currently occupying the penthouse and then store the expiration date when their stay was over. And because this was kind of a really, you know, gimmicky, you know, not a very involved feature, it was all pretty simple. Um, I didn't really see a need to store this in a, in a relational database. It was just something like that was overkill, right? So KVPs were a great use case for that. And there are plenty of other good use cases too. Settings, I've definitely used KVPs for settings and uh, other things, but I'll leave that up to uh, an exercise to the viewer to figure out where KVPs fit in in your server and an exercise to the viewer to comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your ideas of what you're going to use KVPs for. What are What problems are you going to solve with these now that you know about them? So drop that down below in the comments. And then of course, it's kind of obligatory on YouTube. You gotta subscribe, you gotta hit that bell icon. I gotta tell you all that stuff. Uh, because there are more videos coming both in the Zero to Hero series if you're new to 5M development and the Master series if you really want to level up your skills. But I think we covered the bulk of what's available with the KVP data store in 5M. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.